I'm Ryan Dean with Gilson Engineering. Today we're in the Gilson Engineering Flow Lab, and we are here to talk about a, a second Gilson Engineering bleach flow meter system. So what we have today is a system that is, uh, as opposed to being our original hardwired design, this, is, this version is designed to act like a gas pump. So what I mean by that is it's a batching system. So we still supply you with a paddle wheel flow meter. We still supply you with a T-fitting. You still get supplied with a display and we're gonna have a power supply. In addition to that, you're going to have an electrically actuated ball valve and we're going to have the power supply and our display housed in a NEMA 4X enclosure. So the goal of this system is you have a customer come into your pool store, they tell you I need to fill up five jugs or 12 and a half gallons. You type that value into the PLC and then the PLC will open your valve to start flowing bleach. Once you get to a predetermined percentage of that batch size, we will start to close the valve. It will go to, to basically 75 or 80% closed. And then we will have a slower flow rate or a trickle flow until you finish off that batch size. And once we hit your 12 and a half gallons or five jugs, this valve goes completely closed and you're now done flowing. So there's no longer any concern with uh, a customer telling you the incorrect amount of bleach they flowed. We're in complete control of how much bleach they get. Okay, so now let's talk about each individual component, how it works, where it's mounted, and what it does for you. So our paddle wheel flow meter, this is gonna be at your fill station. Uh, the paddle wheel is what actually mounts in your line as the bleach or the sodium hypochlorite flows past the paddle wheel, it spins the paddle itself. This paddle generates pulse outputs. It's going to be hardwired to the display inside my enclosure. This display is going to count those pulses and then based on a predefined K factor, it will convert those pulses into gallons or total flow. This paddle wheel flow meter gets installed inside this T-fitting. Uh, this T-fitting will mount in, in your line. You'll cut out a section of line, mount it in there, stick the paddle wheel flow meter inside of it. You'll notice on the inside of the paddle wheel, there's two little notches at the top. And on the top of the T, there's two little grooves so that the paddle wheel will only go into the T-fitting in one orientation. That assures that this paddle is perpendicular to to flow so that way we know that it will spin as you're flowing bleach. When it comes to the installation of these, we would like to have 10 pipe diameters upstream of the flow meter, five pipe diameters of straight run downstream of the flow meter. So if we have a one inch line, as this is a one inch T, that would be 10 inches of unobstructed straight run upstream of the meter, five inches of unobstructed straight run downstream of the meter. In an ideal scenario, this would get mounted in a vertical orientation with flow up. The next best scenario is in a horizontal configuration uh, as I'm holding the T here. Next, we have the electrically actuated ball valve. So, so this happens to be a two inch ball valve, but we will supply this valve in whatever size uh, line that you're going to be installing this into. And basically the way that this valve works is it's being sent a signal, in this case 120 volts AC, and that signal is telling this valve to either open or close. We also have a third position, which we refer to as a middle position that we can set um, to whatever value we want. We're gonna default to between 75 and 80% closed, so that when we first open the valve, it's wide open, you're flowing at your normal flow rate, you're gonna hit a predetermined portion of your batch size, we're gonna go about three quarters of the way closed, and then we're gonna be at a slower flow rate until we get to the completed batch, and then we will close that valve. When the valve is in its closed position like it is right now, this light is green. That's basically telling you you're in a safe condition, you're unable to flow, and when this valve is in an open position, this LED will go to red, which I will show you in, in a little bit. Then the last part of 
of the system is the display and enclosure. So uh, in a few minutes, I'll show you exactly how we're gonna program and step through the menu of the display, but do realize that this display is a single flow input display. So we'll have one of these displays per uh, fill station and everything internal is gonna come pre-wired to you. So what we have here is we're gonna have our flow meter is gonna be connected to the, the, um, the top of our display to our inputs. And then we're going to have all of our outputs to open and close our valve pre-wired. The valve is going to be a conduit to the bottom of the enclosure. We're gonna supply this with 15 feet of conduit and uh, we have a power supply inside that takes AC power, converts it to DC power for my display and my flow meter. And this power supply is also giving the 120 volt AC actuation power to the valve. Uh, internal, everything is mounted here on connectors. But again, this will all come pre-wired. And then you'll also have a 15 foot power cord that will plug into a 120 volt AC outlet. So that's all the components of the system. I'll now show you how we go about programming this display.